Hello, it's Alex, the Bookubus. I'm back with another review from The Vampire Vault and today I'm going to be talking about Vampire Child by Ruby Jean Jensen. <laughs> Vampire Child by Ruby Jean Jensen was originally published in 1990. And why yes, I did take inspiration from the cover and fashion my hair into a kind of mullet situation. So Vampire Child is following a family. We have the mother, Ketty, and her teenage daughter, Babette, and young son, Danny. And we find out that Ketty had another son who is now also in his young teens. And a couple of years ago, there was an incident and Ketty had become convinced that Patrick is a vampire and that she had to take Babette and Danny away from him and hope that he would never find them again. So Patrick has been living with his father, but one night he arrives at Ketty's house and wouldn't you know, there's another incident which ends with the death of young Danny and in the aftermath, the family are all split up. So Ketty is sent to jail under suspicion of having killed Danny. Babette is held for a couple of days while a social worker finds a foster home for her and then she goes into a foster home. And Patrick is sent to a place called Boys Farm, which is a farm of some sort. They do have a lot of animals there, like cows and horses and stuff. And the place is also used to provide accommodation for a number of boys who have been victims of abuse. So we're introduced to several other characters here. There is a detective who is looking into the case of the death of young Danny. There is a social worker and there are the people that run the boys farm. So there is the owner, and his two daughters, a few employees who work there, and of course the other boys who are currently living there. Before Ketty was sent to jail though, she did get a chance to speak with Babette and told her of her fears about Patrick, told Babette that she thinks Patrick is a vampire. And Babette did not take the news very well. She doesn't believe her mother and in fact thinks that she's crazy and is convinced that once she's let out of jail, she is going to kill Patrick. But because Babette doesn't believe that there's any reason for her to do that, you know, she, Patrick is her mother's son, so why would she want to kill him? So Babette swears to find Patrick before her mother does and protect him. So we have Ketty, who is desperate to get out of jail and kill her son Patrick because she believes he's a vampire and she believes he has already killed a couple of times and does not want him to kill again. We have Babette, the daughter, who is afraid that her mother has gone mad and delusional and she wants to be able to protect her brother Patrick. And we have Patrick who is currently staying at this boys farm place and isn't really fitting in with the place and the other boys. And there might be a couple more unexplained incidents that take place at Boys Farm while Patrick is staying there. I really enjoyed this one. I rated it four stars. I really like Ruby Jean Jensen's writing. It's very easy to get into and she always has really interesting ideas for her stories and interesting and well-written characters. She also writes child characters really well. I think in all of the books of hers that I've read so far, there has always been at least one child character. And yeah, she does a really good job with them. This one does have quite a lot of characters. Like I said, we've got the few family members and then we're introduced to several other characters who become involved in the story. But I didn't have a hard time keeping up with who was who because they all felt like individual and unique characters. I really liked the emotional aspect of this story. There are a lot of characters here who are dealing with some kind of grief or trauma of some sort and it really helped to build these characters 
into believable people. I also really liked the vampire element of this story, of course, and I thought it was pretty unique as well because it is described as kind of coming to Patrick as kind of being a separate entity but also a part of him and Patrick does try to overcome it. He doesn't want this thing to take him over but it is a difficult battle and the description of the vampire itself was really great. It is described as this winged thing with holes where its eyes should be. It was really quite grotesque and really really cool. So I'm not going to get into any major spoilers of where the story goes and how it ends up but I really enjoyed it. The story flits around back and forth between all of these different characters and I really liked that because we got all of these different perspectives on how certain things were playing out. I feel like a lot of vampire stories have the vampire as the main character and so we're hearing either mostly or only from their perspective. So I did like that this one was told from multiple perspectives. I will say I wish there had been maybe a little bit more from Patrick's perspective though because his story was just so interesting and I really enjoyed the scenes where we are following him. I just wish we'd had a little bit more time from his perspective. We also get some backstory on the whole vampire situation, which I thought was great. I do wish we'd had maybe a little bit more because some of it was maybe a little vague, which I didn't mind too much, but yeah, if we'd had a little bit more on that backstory, that would have been cool. And you'll be pleased to know that the vampire leather jacket on the cover is a part of the story. I think the only detail that's different is that in the book, vampire is written in white rather than red but I can totally see why they went for red for the cover art because that seems a bit more fitting for a vampire story and I don't think there was a character who actually had a mullet in the story but again I can see why an artist would choose to do so because I mean if you can have a mullet why not? I think the only other specific thing I wanted to mention was that there are some details here and descriptions that are outdated and would be problematic today. Unfortunately that's just yeah a product of the time. This came out in 1990 so just wanted to mention that anyway. And there is some animal death in this story as well so just wanted to give you a heads up for that. But yeah, overall I really enjoyed this one. Like I said, I rated it four stars. It was an excellent read. I would describe this as quite a character-focused family drama, but with one of those family members being a vampire. And while the vampire scenes were kind of scattered throughout the story rather than being the main focus of it, they ended up being some of my favourite parts of the book. They do get quite dark and yeah a little bit gruesome at times and I thought they were really effective. As you may know Ruby Jean Jensen's books have been out of print for a really long time but there is a publisher who is reissuing them both in print and ebook format. I'm not sure if Vampire Child has been reissued yet. I did have a quick look online but I couldn't see this one available yet but I know the publisher is you know working through releasing each of her titles so if it's not available currently it should be at some point in the near future. Or of course you can track down a second-hand copy of this edition which is from Zebra Books or Zebra and uh, yeah who could resist this amazing cover artwork. So those were my thoughts on Vampire Child by Ruby Jean Jensen. Let me know if you've read this one, I would love to hear what you thought. Thank you ever so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed it and hopefully I will see you again in my next video. Bye!